Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so we have the last talk of session three now. And the speaker is uh, Rakesh Haldar from ISA Mohali. Rakesh will be speaking on Canon Thurston maps in trees of hyperbolic matrix spaces. Over to you, Rakesh. Please begin. Oh, yeah. My screen is visible and me also, right? Yes, yes, perfect. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, especially Shomura, for giving me this opportunity to talk about my research on this world of group cap three. So I'll speak on canvas and map in trees of matrix spaces. So this is a joint work with my supervisor, Pranav Sardar. So let's begin. So in this talk, I'll speak on hydraulic matrix spaces groups, their boundaries. Canthurston maps, trees of matrix spaces, and then how do we generalize this Canthurston theorem in coarse geometric setting? So, suppose we are given a matrix space X, and by a geodesic joining a pair of points X and Y, we mean a, mean a continuous now alpha, which is distance preserving. That means distance of distance between alpha S and alpha T is same as distance between S and T in the interval. And alpha of A is X and alpha of B is Y. By a geodesic triangle, okay, so a matrix space is said to be geodesic if given any pair of points, there exists a geodesic joining them, at least one. And by a geodesic triangle for a given three points, X, Y, Z, we mean a choice of pair of, a choice of geodesic for pair of points. So there might be two geodesic joining X and Y, that's possible. And a matrix space, uh, sorry, a, a triangle is said to be delta hyperbolic if this is delta, delta greater than or equal to zero. If delta neighborhood of either one of any two sides contains the third side. In this picture, I consider delta neighborhood of xy and yz, it contains the third side xz. And a geodesic matrix space is said to be hyperbolic if all its geodesic triangle are uniform slim. That means there exists delta greater than or equal to zero. For which every geodesic triangle is delta slim. It does not depend on the points, how far they are situated in the spaces. The delta has to be uniform for any three points. And a geodes by a geodesic ray, we mean an isometric embedding of non-negative reals. That means it is a map which satisfies this distance condition. An isometric embedding of reals is said to be geodesic line. So before giving uh, the example of hyperbolic matrix spaces, let me introduce some terminology in post geometry setting. So proper embedding. So a map phi between two topological spaces is said to be proper map if the inverse image of any compact set is compact. And a map between matrix spaces is said to be phi proper embedding for a proper map phi if for any two points y comma y prime distance between f y comma f y prime is less than or equal to r implies their distance in the uh, domain space has to be less than or equal to f of r. It's actually, in mean, geometrically, it means that infinite diameter of set in y cannot be crossed into a finite diameter set under this map f. Uh, by a quasi isometric embedding between two matrix spaces y and x, uh, we mean to satisfy this condition. So given any uh, y comma y prime inside this case y, uh, this inequality holds. So here, if I take epsilon to be zero, then this map you can see is continuous. And if I take k is one and epsilon zero, then this is an isometric embedding. So in general, this map need not be continuous. So now we'll define hyperbolic groups. So for now, uh, for us, the group we consider are all finitely generated. So ARG is finitely generated and S is a finite generating set. And Kelly graph of G with respect to S is a graph whose vertices are the elements of G and two vertices G and H are joined by an H if they differ by an element S inside S union S inverse. That means here G inverse H is S. And one can prove that this graph is connected provide if and only if S is uh, generating set. And now we want to metrize this graph, Kelly graph, by declaring all edges to be isometric to closed unit interval 
and the distance between any two points is the length minimizing path in that graph and we say g is hyperbolic group if this kelly graph is hyperbolic geodesic matrix space so here the when we matrix this thing the loknath kundu i think there he has defined some matrix on group that is the same matrix and he also defined hyperbolic groups so this is the same definition and as of now you can see this hypervolicity of g depends on this graph and this graph depends on this generating set as so i mean uh, there is a question on this how do we uh, speak on this well definedness of this hyperbolic group but uh, this is the case because of some result of gromo so i am not going into that but if you can prove that for a finite generating set this is hyperbolic then that is enough so as we as i am i have defined this hyperbolic matrix so that is a generalization of the classical hyperbolic plane so here it is so you consider this set x comma y inside r2 such that y is greater than 0 so you consider the upper half plane and then you define this matrix on that so this space will be a riemannian matrix with constant sectional curvature minus 1 and there the geodesic looks like it is either it is a geodesic line looks like looks like either it is uh, parallel to y axis or a semi circle whose center lie on this x axis so in this case you can see the geodesic triangle looks like this and here this geodesic triangle with this matrix are all log root 2 plus 1 hyperbolic so this is a hyperbolic matrix space and now we want to define points of infinity and boundary on that set so for that let us fix x not in this hyperbolic plane and we consider all geodesic rays starting at x not then this looks like this i mean either it is uh, upward perpendicularly and then it comes down on x axis and others geodesic rays are this so these are points at infinity all geodesic rays now we want to define a topology on that set set so for that for the timing you can think of x not as a source of light and light travels along this geodesic rays and so consider this point so i want to define a neighborhood system around this point so for that let us fix x n on this geodesic ray such that distance between x not and x n is n now you put an obstacles of some radius that is a technical constant depending on the delta hyperbolicity so you put a uh, obstacles over here such that light cannot travel through this uh, obstacles and you consider the shadow on this x axis so that is the neighborhood around this point for this x n so in other words you consider all geodesic rays which which passes through this ball so then you will get some kind of neighborhood over here now to give a neighborhood system you vary your x and on this geodesic ray such that distance between x not and x n is n that will give you a neighborhood system now for other points let's say you consider this geodesic ray and you put same kind of obstacles there and then you will get a neighborhood for around this point is this side this side along with this ray so this is the topology on this uh, boundary of h2 and this makes h2 as compact and so this is known as shadow topology or is a, i mean a later i will say on compact open topology so that is the same topology so uh, now we will generalize this to for any hyperbolic geodesic matrix space so that is known as geodesic boundary so here we consider proper hyperbolic geodesic matrix space so forget about this properness that is some technical constant a technical term it means that all Mm, uh, finite or uh, all closed ball are compact so you fix a point x not and del x the geodesic boundary i am defining as the geodesic ray starting at x not and put some relation what is the relation two geodesic rays starting at x not is said to be uh, related if their hausdorff of distance is bounded what do we mean by hausdorff of distance in a geodesic matrix space for a set a and b or in a matrix space in general For a set A and B, it is the infimum of all such R such that R neighborhood of A sits inside the R neighborhood of uh, sits inside B and the R neighborhood of B sits inside A. So, and you can prove that this is an equivalence relation, and uh, one can put a one can put compact open topology on this. So this is the geodesic boundary, and now we will define a sequential boundary to define our Cayenne system map. So for that we need Gromov Binet product. Suppose you have a geodesic matrix space and you consider a geodesic triangle. Found by x and x y z, so now you can find three points on this geodesic triangle c x, c y, c z, 
such that distance between z to cx is same as z to cy distance between y to cx is same as y to cz and for this as well and this is just a, a solving a three a solving three linear equations with three variables that is uh, easy and now we want to uh, define this distance from z to cx in terms of the length of the sides so that one can see that it is actually half of distance between y to z plus x to z minus x to y and this we denote as x dot y with respect to z is a homogeneous matrix and so now you consider a uh, geodesic matrix with which is hyperbolic if it's a point x not we want to define sequential boundary so a sequence is said to converge to infinity if xn gamma binar product of xn and xm with respect to x not is going to infinity as n going to infinity to define so boundary that is a uh, sequence of uh, that is a sequence which converges to infinity with some relation relation is that the sequence is related if their gamma binar product is going to zero as n going to infinity and this is a uh, this is this will be a equivalence relation provided x is hyperbolic in general this is not a this might not be a equivalence relation and now one can put a nice topology on this uh, set such that if the space is proper hyperbolic geodesic matrix space then the geodesic boundary as we have defined earlier that is homeomorphic to this del s x now let us define the kanan thurston map so given any map f from y to x between hyperbolic geodesic matrix spaces we said we say that this admits a city map kanan thurston map in short i mean in short city map if it extends continuously to a map on their boundaries that means if it extend to a map on their boundaries such that the boundary map is continuous in other words if we can prove this condition then it is same as the continuity so for any j inside del x so that is a Uh, equivalence class of sequences. So I take any sequence y n converging to j, then f of y n has to converge to a point eta, well-defined point eta for some eta inside x. And this eta should not depend on the choice of g, uh, choice of sequence y n I am taking to converge to j. So why this term is uh, term Kanan Thurston? So uh, you consider a closed hyperbolic three manifold fibering over circle that is coming. of i mean uh, mapping torus of uh, hyperbolic surfaces by a by a sibrianus of homeomorphism and now you uh, you consider the uh, the surface uh, surface sits inside this hyperbolic three manifold for this inclusion you have uh, lift on the universal cover that is from h2 to h3 so h2 is the universal cover of this hyperbolic surface and h3 is the universal cover of this closed hyperbolic three manifold so then they showed that this lift extends con extends continuously to their boundaries that means there is a map from s1 to s2 which are the boundaries of h2 and h3 respectively and they also showed that this map is surjective and their theorem tells us that uh, we have a sort exact sequence like this uh, that is why the term is kanan thurston i just said and their theorem tells us tells that we have a sort exact sequence 1 to pi on of a z this is the hyperbolic surface closed hyperbolic surface genus g g greater than or equal to 2 and this is the mapping to us that is the closed hyperbolic three manifold so this is hyperbolic this is hyperbolic and when do we say this this inclusion admits a city map that means uh, this is a, these are all hyperbolic groups so they are kelly graph are all hyperbolic so then the kelly graph as a geodesic matrix space extends continuously to their bromo boundary so and then this says that this inclusion extend continuously to their boundaries and that map is surjective and this i mean theorem generalized later by mohan mitra he showed that given any sort exact sequence of hyperbolic groups here all groups are hyperbolic and h is non elementary that means its boundary consists of at least three points so then the inclusion admits a kanan thurston map and that is surjective so it is a generalization of this thing now let me introduce i mean a trees of matrix spaces so instead of reading all this let me introduce this definition in terms of picture so trees of matrix spaces consist of this following data so in base you have a tree 
that means it is a graph without embedded circle and over that you have space x and from that you have a projection map which is only six and uh, what are the properties it have it has so you for any point w i mean for any vertex w in t the inverse image that is a geodesic matrix space we denote it as xw and similar for xb and for any edge if i consider the midpoint me of that edge is the edge joining b and w then their inverse image is also a geodesic matrix space we denote it as xe and whenever there is an edge then xe to xb and xe to xw there are proper maps and proper maps comes with some i mean proper embedding so pr proper embedding comes with some proper map so that we fix a proper map for the structure that means for every edge the proper maps the fixed proper map works and now we consider mapping cylinder over here everywhere we do and this is the structure of this space x and if i consider this x e the vertex space that is also proper embedding inside this x so this is the structure for trees of matrix space and what are the source of example for this kind of structure so here is one example you consider uh, known as amalgamation so you consider a, an edge with two vertices and you think of there is a, a group for this vertex let's say g1 and for this vertex we have a group g2 and we have also subgroups h1 and h2 and such that the subgroups are isomorphic via these isomorphic inside now we construct a new group out of uh, this g1 and g2 its presentation is coming from presentation of g1 that is s1 r1 and presentation of uh, g2 s2 r2 with some extra relation that is psi of h equal to h for all h inside h1 so with this structure this this gives rise to a tree of matrix space structure whose base tree is known as bassera tree uh, i am not going into all details and the uh, the the space over uh, that tree whose vertex spaces are uh, copies of kelly graphs of uh, g1 and g2 and edge spaces are kelly graph of this either h1 or h2 because they are same and then the g the group g acts on this space x Uh, freely such that the quotient is finite graph and this is uh, the source of example and uh, another is a general extension and in general graph of group so now here mitra proved another theorem is that so suppose we consider a tree of matrix space so let me go back to the picture you consider this tree of matrix space such that these vertex spaces are all hyperbolic and the edge spaces are also hyperbolic and edge space to the corresponding vertex space this maps they are all qi embedding and this qi embedding also comes with some constant k epsilon so that constant also uniform for any edge and uh, such that this x space that is hyperbolic then mitra proved the following theorem so and the structure i have said it is uh, termed as trees of hyperbolic geodesic matrix space it means all vertex spaces are hyperbolic with the qi embedded condition that means the edge spaces uh, inside the vertex spaces are all qi embedded uniform qi embedded and such that x is hyperbolic then you take any vertex u and take the inverse image xu and you know x is hyperbolic and x is also hyperbolic by our assumption <coughs> sorry then you show that this inclusion admits a canthurston map and then as i said this uh, amalgamation also gives rise to a tree of matrix space structure so we will have such theorem for amalgamation that means g1 g2 are hyperbolic h1 h2 are quasi convex subset inside those uh, groups so quasi convex means they are kelly graphs the so kelly graph of h1 sits inside kelly graph of uh, g1 that is qi uh, embedded and for g2 as well then the inclusion from g1 to g or g2 to g that admits a canthurston map so now recently Kapovich and Sardar they generalized this Mahan theorem 
to any subtree of spaces. That means we have the same same structure. Where x is hyperbolic and this is a tree of hyperbolic geodesic matrix spaces with ki embedded condition, and then instead of taking a vertex, they are taking a subtree, yes, inside P, and they are taking inverse image, x s, inverse image of s. The hyperbolicity of x s follows easily uh, from the hyperbolicity of x by some con combination theorem uh, due to Bayes' minor fan, and then they showed that. This inclusion admits a Cantor map. So this is a generalization of Mann's Mitra's theorem. So now, having said all this, we pose this uh, question that how much conditions can we relax in above theorem? So I have trees of metric space. One is taking vertex space only. Another is taking subtree, uh, inverse image of subtree. So can we relax some condition to get positive answer? For this kind of city map, so this gives uh, I mean this motivates us to define uh, morphism of trees of metric spaces. So I will not go in that generality, but I will stick myself on some subtree of subspaces. So here is the definition. Again, I will not go. I will not uh, read all this, but instead I will explain this in picture. So here we have trees of metric spaces. Now. i want to define a subspace inside this x such that it also will be a trees of metric spaces in its own right so for that and such that it uh, it should generalize the earlier that is subtree of spaces okay. so for that what do we do we fix a subtree s inside p and for each vertex w Inside S, we do not take the full inverse image, as uh, Kapovi, Sardar, and others wanted uh, to. So we take a small subspace inside that, and for H space, I also we also take some small subspace inside the H spaces, and we consider this mapping cylinder uh, kind of structure and the mapping so such that this Y is a geodesic matrix space inside X. And the uh, mapping cylinder structure in between edge, in between two vertices joined by an edge, are the restriction of the structure of X. And such that this uh, Y space sits inside X as a proper embedding. And this vertex space also, vertex space of Y sits inside the vertex space of uh, X that also proper embedding. So this kind of structure. Is known as sub subtree of subspaces. So I am not taking full inverse image. So in this generality, we have this uh, theorem. So what is that? So I have these uh, trees of metric spaces with the uh, conditions I have explained, such that x is hyperbolic. And then we consider y is a subtree of subspaces. That means s is a subtree of p, and we are not taking the inverse image. We are taking The structure I have explained, and such that w y e equal to x e for any x. So this is a crucial condition, and the inclusion y u inside x u that admits a city map. So this y u are hyperbolic, and the hyperbolicity of y that that follows from the hyperbolicity of x with uh, the help of combination theorem, and uh, the inclusion admits a Cantor map. So So you see, this theorem generalizes the earlier all theorems because uh, if I take y e equal to x u, then this uh, this condition uh, of existence of Cantor map is vacuously true, and uh, so this is the generalization. And as I said, this condition is uh, crucial because if we relax this condition, so then we will have a hyperbolic group. Which is coming from a gen extension, which gives rise, as I said, a gen extension also gives rise to trees of metric spaces. And inside that hyperbolic group, we can construct a, another hyperbolic group, which gives rise to subtree of subspaces. And such that the Cantor, such that the inclusion does not admit a Cantor map. That means the inclusion extend continuously to, extend to the boundary, but that that boundary map is not continuous. So, 
that is the theorem we have proved in this and i'll stop here and these are the some references thank you if you have any questions thank you rakesh for the very nice talk uh, any any questions so i have one question can you just go over to the definition when you define the subtree of uh, subspaces uh, sub right so so you are saying uh, you are considering some subtree of the original tree right yes so you may miss some of the vertices yes that so, is allowed yeah that is allowed because uh, i i am not considering the full tree but in the proof what we do uh first of all that uh, the projection of s uh, sorry projection of y this geodesic matrix space inside x that projection is s that is subtree so in the proof what do we do we take the full inverse image of s inside x that we denote as let's say xs in this uh, so here they denote as xs right okay so first we, we prove that uh, the inclusion of y inside xs you see Uh, the projection of y is s so that means y sits inside x s okay so we first prove that uh, the inclusion of y inside x s that admits a canon system map and then we apply this theorem that will be further uh, that uh, x x s to x that admits a canon system map so here i have y y to x s that is a canon system map and this is also a canon system map then the composition is also canon system map so but in the in the subspace if you have two vertices can you yes. miss the edge in between i mean no 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 because no, i said why is a geodesic matrix space so that means from here suppose okay. this edge you are missing so here to here you have to go there you have to pass through this edge you you cannot miss edges yeah, because right. this is a tree because it's a tree yes. yeah all right any other questions if not let us thank the speaker yeah thanks a lot rakesh